second video for Voice in the Wilderness Ministries, and the second question that we're going to deal with is is one that I've actually been asked uh, not very long ago at, at a place of work. I was asked, you know, if God loves everybody and he's, and he's in control and he's sovereign and he wants people to be saved, what about all the people in the world through history who have never heard the name of Jesus or who never heard the gospel preached to them or who will never hear the gospel preached to them, future tense as well. What about those? How does How is that reconciled with a loving, sovereign God? Well, that question is easily answered if you're a Calvinist. Okay, that's an easy question. Well, the answer to a Calvinist would say, apparently those people were not of the elect and God sovereignly decreed in eternity past that they were uh, destined to be reprobate and destined to hell. And that is actually uh, the will of God and pleases God, and, and that's, that's that answer. I would very strongly disagree with that answer, and I'm not going to take the time here to explain why I don't believe in uh, predestination double. Okay. But the answer that, that I would give, and most, most people would give this answer, they would say, well, Romans 1 says that every man and woman that looks up into the sky and sees nature, even, even on the ground around them, they see nature, they know in their heart that there is a creator. And they are, they are inherently created with that awareness of a creator. And they will seek that creator and if they truly seek that creator God will reveal himself but but what happens is in cultures all over the world we see this people worship a creature or part of nature instead of the creator that's why we see idols and false religions all over the world even in remote islands where no one has ever been we find people worshiping a tree worshiping a rock something a bird uh, so it, it it verifies that Romans 1 is true, but I would, I would say that is not really the best answer. Uh, it, it is part of the answer, I think, and it, it is proof that Romans 1 is true and the Bible is true, that, that man knows that there is a creator. And I think to reject that is, is really part of uh, the fool saying in his heart there's no God. Only, only, God says that no person with a, a functioning mind will look at nature and the world and the universe and say there is no God. Only a fool would say that. And a fool knows the answer is, is God, but he says basically, he stops his ears and says, no, it's not God. I'm not going to hear that. So, But I would go a step farther and say a better answer to that and um, you know, I'm not, not downing any, the first answer in Romans. That's an excellent answer and I think that is sufficient. Yes. But I think we can go farther and give a, a better, complete answer by saying, you know, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve had a responsibility to pass down the truth of God to their children, and that happened uh, for a while. But we see at some point, it, men did not know the Lord, and men rejected the truth which they knew, and it's, it's even tied into Romans. I believe Romans 1 is actually talking about that. They took the truth of God and turned it into something else, and eventually God gave them over to it. So, I cannot explain the sovereignty of God, or I, I would be him, obviously, can't do that. But God gave the truth to man originally, and at some point in the genetic line, way back when, in Genesis, people rejected that, and it brought not only damnation on them, but upon their children. And it says that in the Bible, that the sins of the fathers carry over to generations to generations. It's not, it's not some uh, mystical thing. It's a simple fact that if you reject the truth of God and raise children in that way, they are going to grow up and reject the truth of God, most likely, unless God intervenes. And they're going to pass that on to their children and grandchildren. So over time, we see as the nations spread out across the earth, we see vast civilizations rejecting the word of God, rejecting the truth of God, rather, uh, rejecting the existence of God, rejecting his true identity. So it is not like the Lord has failed somehow in letting people have a chance. It is generational sin that the rewards of which are being reaped. And I know that answer really bothers somebody, uh, bothers 
lots of people because they feel like, well, you know, how can God allow that? Well, God allows free will. Uh, he, he, all through the scriptures, we see that man has a free will. God has a sovereign control over the events of men, but he also, within that sovereignty, allows men to make free choices. He is sovereign enough to accomplish his will even in the midst of those free choices. He obviously knows what those choices will be. But nowhere do I find that, that God is a, uh, a dictating monster that is the author of sin. And we have to come to the realization that this is not on God. This is on man. Man had the truth and perverted the truth, corrupted the truth, and rejected the truth. And now his great, 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 umpteen, great grandchildren are paying for it. And that's why it is so important to take the gospel everywhere we can because the effects of the curse are multiplied uh, through the genealogies. Because not only are, are the sin being passed down, but the, the, the effects of sin are being passed down. The, the rewards of evil, of rejecting God's truth, are being passed down generation to generation. And we have got to uh, do our part. Obviously, the Holy Spirit is the, the real actor there who, who intervenes and makes a effort to primarily initiate that process of soul searching that leads to conviction and search for truth and confession of faith and righteousness. But we are ambassadors, and that is why it's very important that we do the work of Christ, which is to undo the work of darkness, which is so rampant in this world. And I hope that is a good answer. Uh, that is something definitely for you to think about, and, and if someone asks you that, uh, maybe you know now you can say a little bit better than, well, you know, I don't know, because that's not always really a good thing. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the video channel on YouTube. You'll be linked to it. And, of course, you can always go to the Voice in the Wilderness Ministries blog and ask questions. Submit them that way. You can also email me at kennethdwillis at gmail.com. Have a blessed day.